Music is embedded in our culture. Some scientists believe music came before speech. So it shouldn't surprise you that music is helping Alzheimer's patients cope with pain, take pills, and remember memories. This topic is personal for me. See my grandma? She loved musicals, puzzles, and spending time with her grandchildren. This picture was taken when I was two years old. Here is another picture of my grandma. This picture was taken when I was eight years old. She had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's when I was five and had been in a nursing home ever since. She still enjoyed books, music, and spending time with her family. I was glad to spend time with her. This picture was taken later that year. Even at the end of her life, music and family were important to her. This picture was taken a few months before my grandma passed on. When I was in second grade, my teacher, Miss Slade, taught us the song Swingin' on a Star by Bing Crosby. This song came out when my grandma was 19 years old, and the song was from the movie Going My Way. I sang it to her, and she had a reaction. Even though my grandma could no longer talk and often just stared into space, she looked directly at me and tapped her hand. This upbeat song was still in her brain. I sang it to her multiple times afterwards. So, what is Alzheimer's disease? A disease that affects memory, speech, thinking, and behavior. Over 5.4 million people in the United States have it, and Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Every 66 seconds, someone gets Alzheimer's. That is about 1,300 a day. 1,300 is close to the number of students and faculty in homics. There are no cures for Alzheimer's at the moment, although scientific advancements are being made. Alzheimer's disease mainly affects the brain. To understand Alzheimer's, you need to understand the brain. The brain has three parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. The cerebrum controls the brain. It controls problem solving, memory, thinking, feeling, and movement. The cerebellum is in the back of the brain and controls coordination and balance. The brain stem connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, and digestion. The neuron forest is the connective branching that runs throughout the brain. It is the basis for thinking, feeling, and memory. The neurons each serve different functions. Alzheimer's attacks some of these functions, slowing the brain down. As neurons are attacked, a person with Alzheimer's loses their everyday functions. They forget the most basic things like their family members' names. Sometimes they don't even recognize themselves when they look in the mirror. As the disease progresses, they often lose their balance and spend the rest of their lives in a wheelchair. Ultimately, their brain that controls swallowing and breathing can fail as well. While some scientists are working on finding a cure, others are researching how music can make living with this disease a little better. A study at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology shows that music has separate passageways in our brain. It doesn't matter if you like the music or not. This circuit is not affected by other noises, like a dog barking or a toilet flushing. There is also a speech passageway. Our brain treats speech and music differently from each other. This is a big deal for how we perceive music and may help Alzheimer's patients stay connected with memories long after parts of their brain controlling speech are destroyed by the disease. A small but important study done at Boston University shows that current Alzheimer's patients can learn and retain new information better if they learn through music. The study was mostly done by Brandon Alley. 
The study was small and only consisted of 32 people, but could be life-changing for Alzheimer's patients. The scientists taught older people and Alzheimer's patients lyrics to a song they didn't know. When tested, the older people who did not suffer from Alzheimer's remembered the same amount of lyrics when taught with and without music. Alzheimer's patients, on the other hand, remembered more lyrics with music. By this theory, music could help Alzheimer's patients remember new information even after they get disease. If a person with Alzheimer's could be taught through music to remember to take their medicine, it might let them keep their independence for a longer period of time. Robert Church, the director of music at Sarah Newman Nursing Home in Mamaroneck, who asked not to be filmed on camera, spoke to me about music and Alzheimer's. He was a professional wedding singer before he started playing music for Alzheimer's patients. He told me how upbeat, happy, sing-along type songs are best. Love songs are great, and occasionally he will sing a sad song because sometimes you just need a good cry, but he mostly sings happy songs. Church said that music from the 1940s and 1950s or when they were younger gets the best response. Another good idea is to sing songs from movies that were played over and over again. Mr. Church also said that he would vary the music according to seasons. He might play Let It Snow and then tell everyone to look out the window and see the snow. His motivation is to allow patients who lead an otherwise mundane existence to connect with happier times, to dance and enjoy themselves. After meeting with Mr. Church, I stayed and watched a music program being done for Alzheimer's patients. Most of the patients were uneasy before the music started. People were screaming across the room. Others were sleeping. When the music started playing, a man started clapping. A woman started dancing about her wheelchair. Almost everyone was moving their body or singing along. All the Alzheimer's patients seemed to be enjoying themselves. Robert sang Swingin' on a Star by Bing Crosby for the Alzheimer's patients. This is the exact same song I sang to my grandma six years earlier. The people were just as happy to hear the joyful song. I still remembered every word. Music is very beneficial to Alzheimer's patients. The ability to engage in music stays intact late into the disease. People usually connect music to memories. Many people with Alzheimer's disease are depressed or very agitated. Music is a way to calm them down and may lead to a decrease of their need for antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs. People respond best to music from when they were 18 to 25 years old, although music from a person's childhood also works. Stimulative music, like dance music from the time they were young adults, is good to get them to do activities. Sedative music with slow tempos are good to stop agitation and help Alzheimer's patients go to sleep. The patient may tap their hand or hum along. If they can sing, that is great too. It is all about finding the song that works. For early stage Alzheimer's patients, you could go out dancing with them or just stay in the house and dance. Going out and doing karaoke might also be fun. If the person used to play an instrument, encourage them to try again. The Alzheimer's patient might experiment with different concert venues to see what works. For middle stage Alzheimer's patients, have them sing when they are walking to help with balance. Try doing karaoke in the house. Play background music during the day to improve mood. Play relaxing music to help the patient fall asleep. For late Alzheimer's, play music that they used to like. Do sing-alongs with them. Play exercise music to keep them up and relaxing music to help them fall asleep. So. Here comes the big question. What can you do? 
A good idea is to sit down with your family and loved ones and make a list of your favorite songs into a playlist. I made my own scene here. I encouraged my family to make their own lists as well. The best songs are from when you were a child or young adult. The organization Music and Memory has done studies that have found that individual playlists that can be played on an iPod are helpful to most patients. This list could be very beneficial if a family member gets Alzheimer's. Although I have been focused on the effects of music and Alzheimer's disease, music therapy works for any type of pain and helps people remember good memories. Even if you never need these lists for medical problems, think about how much fun you will have doing this. To get you started, look at the list on the trifold beside me. There is a list of memorable songs from adults and memorable songs for 8th graders. I encourage you to take a post-it and write a memorable song from you. While scientists are working long and hard for a cure for Alzheimer's, and hopefully there will be one soon, right now we can count on music to ease the pain.